Tonight we begin a series of cover stories on an unseen health menace, lead in the environment. Our automobiles are dumping tons of lead all around us, and levels of lead in our bodies are at least 1,000 times higher now than the levels of our distant ancestors. Severe lead poisoning can cause mental retardation, sterility, and even death. But small amounts could be very, very harmful, and young children are especially vulnerable to the effects of this poison. Producer Michael Meyerendorf and photographer Kent Westberg looked into the problem. Pat Miles reports part one of this story. Lead is everywhere. It's in the air we breathe. It covers the earth. Over 90% comes from lead in gasoline. In 1983, American cars spewed over 82 million pounds into the environment. Most of it accumulates close to busy roads and freeways where it ends up in house dust and soil where children play. We get lead from newly soldered plumbing. Processed food may pick it up from soldered cans. Lead in the air and the soil contaminates crops, especially fresh leafy vegetables. Traces are found in everything. So even before birth, lead begins accumulating in our bodies, and new research shows there may be no safe level. Lead is ubiquitous in, in our environment. William Harlan is a cardiologist from the University of Michigan. He has just completed a study analyzing information about blood pressure and blood lead levels from over 20,000 people. The analysis uh, showed a consistent direct relationship between the blood lead level measured in that survey and the blood pressure levels. Middle-aged men are more prone to develop high blood pressure, and according to Harlan, if lead in the environment was reduced, thousands of lives that are lost to heart attacks and strokes could be saved each year. The fact of the matter is, if you look at a total national profile, we have never been healthier, we have never lived longer. There must be something that, that we're doing right. Warner Meyer is president of the Lead Industries Association, an organization that represents lead miners and manufacturers. He says that the lead industry is under attack and that the public has been misled with incomplete and distorted information about lead's low-level health effects. We do not believe that because you can measure smaller concentrations, yet you can measure smaller changes in certain body functions, that these have any significant clinical effect. Children are most vulnerable to lead poisoning. Their growing bodies absorb five times as much as adults do, and they are more sensitive to its effects. Nationally, about 4% of all children between six months and five years have enough lead to cause doctors concern. The number is substantially higher in urban areas. Through a routine blood test, these children were found to have high lead levels. Here, further tests are done to see if they need hospitalization. They were lucky. They had no visible symptoms. Would you have ever known? No. Not at all, because he's the healthiest of my kids. It appears to us that lead at doses well below that, which identifies itself as toxic, is associated with impaired brain performance. Herbert Needleman is the head of psychiatry at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. He studied 3,000 first and second graders like these Minneapolis students, children who had no symptoms of lead poisoning. By measuring the lead in lost teeth that their teachers collected, Needleman found that on average, the students with high lead had four to five fewer IQ points, and that on 11 measures of classroom performance, teachers gave them the poorest rating. The kids with high levels of lead in their teeth or blood are more distractible, uh, less persistent at their work, uh, less able to follow sequences of directions because they forget what they started out to do, uh, more, act, uh, more likely to be impulsive or uh, hyperactive. The results of Needleman's research and other studies which measure the effects of lead on intelligence and behavior are highly controversial. Critics say that these studies don't consider all the things that may affect a child's performance. But more and more, physicians and public health officials are beginning to take these studies seriously. We have uh, several hundred thousand children in the country at this moment with lead levels that are hurting them and probably several million that are in borderline conditions that with the passage of time we'll come to understand were hurtful. I think we have no idea how many children in the state of Minnesota have elevated blood lives. Amos Dinard is a Minneapolis pediatrician doing lead research. According to Dr. Dinard, there have been no organized efforts to collect information about Minnesota children with high lead levels in their blood. But statistics from several health clinics in the Twin Cities show that Minnesota may have fewer cases than the national average. No one is really sure. 
Recognizing this, the state health department is trying to coordinate lead screening programs to get a better picture of the high-risk groups. Parents have to protect their children. Society at large has an obligation to protect their most important resource, their children. We have to do it for them. It's not something they can do for themselves. They're involuntarily being exposed to a hazardous toxic agent that's going to affect their mental development, is going to cause them to do poorly in school. And we as a society have no right to condemn any child to that. For the past 20 years, the Center for Disease Control has been steadily lowering the safe levels of lead in our blood. This year, those standards will be lowered once again. So it appears the more we know about lead, the more concerned are health officials. Gasoline is the greatest contributor to lead in the environment, but the introduction of unleaded gas has not solved the problem. Millions of motorists in America are illegally burning leaded gas in their new cars. Tomorrow night, we'll find out how and why they're doing that. If you have any questions about lead poisoning, you can call the State Health Department at 623-5542, 623-5542.